This show is brought to you by NMDC Group. Qatar Energy extends its naphtha supply deal with Japan and Saudi investment from Usul and Bahit to IPO next month. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Qatar Energy has inked a 10-year naphtha supply agreement with Japan's Murubeni Petroleum, building on a five-year naphtha sales deal signed in 2018 that expires in September this year. The subsidiary of trading and investment giant Murubeni Corporation will receive up to 1.2 million tons per annum of naphtha starting from next month. Since 1986, the group has been receiving consistent supplies of naphtha from Qatar, allowing it to ensure a steady supply to various various end users in Japan. Saudi's Osul and Bahit investment company will proceed with its IPO and list its shares on Nomu, the parallel market of the Saudi stock exchange. The firm will offer 1.6 million ordinary shares, representing a 25% stake from October 15th to 19th. Pricing is yet to be announced. The company has a paid-up capital of $16 million. It deals with investment fund and discretionary portfolio management. First Abu Dhabi Bank has reportedly given initial price guidance of around 200 basis points over U.S. Treasuries for its expected $750 million bond sale. The UAE's largest lender plans to sell dollar-denominated Tier 2 bonds maturing in 10 and a half years. They would be non-callable for five and a half years. Hong Kong stocks suffered another hefty loss today on growing concerns about another Federal Reserve interest rate hike, while China's property crisis added to the weak sentiment. The Hang Seng tumbled 1.48 percent, the Shanghai Composite dipped 0.43 percent, while the Shenzhen Composite fell 0.52 percent. Alibaba Group's logistics arm Sunayo plans a Hong Kong IPO that would make it the first unit to be spun off since the Chinese e-commerce group announced its restructuring six months ago. Alibaba says it submitted a spin-off proposal for Sunayo's smart logistics network to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, but it says financial terms have yet to be finalized. However, Alibaba, which holds a 69.54% stake in Sunayo, will continue to hold more than 50% of shares. Russian producers of liquefied petroleum gas have reportedly restarted regular exports of propane and butane via the port of Kerch in Crimea. It comes after an eight-year hiatus. Regular LPG exports from Kerch were suspended in 2015 following sanctions against Russian companies and producers over Moscow's annexation of Crimea in 2014. Analysts say the resumption of exports highlights Russia's ability to manage international sanctions and continue its seaborne energy exports. Industry sources say regular exports started in June. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking, which tracks the daily wins and losses of the world's wealthiest people. Our biggest loser today is LVMH's Bernard Arnault, down $7.9 billion, and now with net wealth of $185.2 billion. Our second biggest loser today is Mexican telecom tycoon Carlos Slim Helo. He's down $2.2 billion, with net wealth of $89.9 billion. And our third place loser is also in luxury, Caring's Francois Pinot, down $1.8 billion, with net wealth of $32.9 billion. Billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. And French authorities have reportedly received a software update from Apple for its iPhone 12. Apple had pledged to update the software to diffuse a row over radiation levels after France suspended sales of iPhone 12 handsets saying they exceed radiation exposure limits. Apple contested the findings, saying the iPhone 12 was certified by multiple international bodies as compliant with global standards. Still, it issued a software update to accommodate the testing methods used in France. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. This show is brought to you by NMDC Group.